Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Dad jeans. Dad jeans. What about this? What about the next time that I'm not around? Uh huh. You do a cockfight tacular. <gasps> And just it, all by yourself. Oh, that's fantastic for the for the listeners. Okay, and maybe we'll do it like a ninety nine percent invisible, where it's just all about the history of cockfighting and legendary roosters and all sorts of things like that. And I'll do it like I'm Roman Mars. Okay, I don't like it anymore because <laughs> what's going to happen is that that is going to be so good that people are going to be like, "Fuck dad jeans." I want to listen to go solo cockfightaculars. Yeah, <laughs> from now on, that's my jam. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you're not. Uh, you may not be wrong. Uh, it would be, yeah, I'd be like, that's so much better than dad jeans. I mean, you listen to that in Memory Palace. They're always like, "This is Roman Mars." I don't. Uh, I don't I'm listen to it. it. I've downloaded. I've been downloading ninety nine percent Invisible for two years now, and have never know. listened to a single episode. It's actually pretty fantastic. I'm sure that's but what they say. They all talk like this. I'm Roman Mars. Do it's I need, insane. Do I need a poop poop? A poop poop poop. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you think it'll help? Here you go. Will it help me? T- take mine. What do you think? You 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 got no sibilants? I have no sibilants, nor do I have plosives. Really? You've you've taken them out of your vernacular? I have, yep. Huh. I, I won't use any words that have the letter P in them. Thank you. That's an actorly trick. It is, yeah. I was wondering uh today the guy who does uh the voice of Piglet uh in Winnie the Pooh. Uh-huh. Uh, you know he's he's like a he's like a please like that kind of like does Piglet have a stutter? He has well he has a little bit he's just a it's a little bit of a nervous tick, but he's uh he's 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 got it he like sort of rattles his peas a little bit and um uh it's really hard to do like I don't know how you do it and sound natural and the guy who does it uh makes it sound very natural and I was wondering if that was an actorly trick I feel like my mic is going in and out. No, you're good. I can hear every glorious word. Really? Yeah. Okay. There's a I, there's a song called uh, "Growing Old" by some piano pop uh, outfit from that I saw open for Midnight Oil at the Yukon Dome in 1990 or 91. Okay. And uh, this was known as the U Condom, of course. Uh huh. And he had this part of the song where he went gu 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 with G's, but really fast. Okay. Like I'm not gu 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 growing old like that. Okay. But but it was like that fast. Right. Right. So is that just an innate skill, or is that something like I don't think gu 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 I don't know how did you do it? Because you do the. I mean, as an actor, you do like the the sixth, 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 sixth. Right. And does that stuff make your voice is it is that is there reality to that or does it make your voice stronger in certain ways? They when I was in grad school, the actors started oh, talking maybe about you're fading in and out. All sorts of Maybe it's my headphones. Oh, maybe it's your headphones. Oh, that sounds better. Oh, oh. I don't know. Um, the, the actors would always talk yep. about uh, all sorts of things like resonators and uh, they were looking at each other inside each other's mouths or the roofs of their mouths and doing okay. all sorts of stuff. And they wanted to get it so that their cheeks would buzz. They were super weird. Yeah, it sounds it. Yeah, they were like taking classes and stuff. I mean, the poop on actors was they took like yawning class and nap class and the rest of us had to write fucking papers. Sure. And I stand by that. But, you know, they did do something with their day. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit hard to justify, like to your parents. But I can see how, if you're actually a trained actor, probably some of that stuff is actually good and useful and uh, beneficial. Fun, well, I've been reading about uh, you know that you know that Paul Ekman character. No, he studied. He classified all the muscular movements of the face. He and this other scientist, so that uh, there are ways. There's something called the Duchenne smile, mm-hmm. and that is the very difficult to duplicate authentic smile where when you smile your you get crow's feet your eyes do the smile movement with the muscle the brawn around your eyes okay and uh, the are uh, those parts of our eyes are actually very hard to control hmm. and w- if i were in t- if i had an acting school i would teach precise anatomic control of your face yeah <laughs> and uh do, it would be all, all from the outside in not inside out not my grandmother's funeral makes me cry yeah and all that bullshit, and I'm in a long came Polly, and it's the last scene or whatever. No, just instead, think really well, fucking sell it. What's that? Sell it, salesmanship. That's Salesman, what you need to learn. Sell it, man. Outside in, work fucking from the outside Donald in. Trump. Donald Trump should be teaching acting classes. Oh Jesus! Did you okay. see the supercut of him just breathing? 
Oh, I couldn't even watch. It was 39 seconds long. I couldn't even make it like 20 seconds in. It was so disturbing to me. It's so disturbing. Why does he do that with his lips? I don't know. It was awful. And then someone else uh, photoshopped. I, I retweeted it today. Someone photoshopped his lips onto his eyes and <laughs> there was no difference. Like there's a picture of him like with his eyes squinched like that and someone changed him into lips and like it's exactly the same image. <laughs> it's amazing. He's such a disturb- disturbing individual. Um, shall we begin our thesis? Oh, let, let's indeed. Our evening's thesis. Let's. Uh, what is our evening th- evening's thesis, Jeffrey? Tonight we are going to prove to you mm-hmm. Uh, the, through the, the scientific method, through the scientific method, that the uh, biblical seven wonders of the world, yes, the hang, uh, were all gardens. were all planted by travelers from our time. <gasps> yes, did you just cook that up on the spot? Yes, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. No, I saw a, a Fox documentary about it. What? No, I'm kidding. Um, remember the alien <laughs> autopsy? Yeah, the one that actually happened? Yeah. <laughs> that Hillary <laughs> that Clinton, Clinton is hiding? Real. Yes. That Shillery is hiding? Um, Shillery. Uh, we're going to get into that tonight. I know. There's much to discuss, Jeffrey, after this. Oh, crack it. Oh, I didn't crack it with you. These uh, ballast point mango even keels are brought to us wow. by a YouTube channel. What? Called the Donut Dudes. We have a sponsor. We have a micro sponsor for the evening. Oh my God! The do- tell me about the Donut Dudes. The Donut Dudes are our dear friend Brian Khan. Oh, Brian Khan. And uh, and his pal, um, and they called in, or no, he he has been telling me. I work with him at Fox. Wow, that's tasty. It is very. This is a good, good tasting beer. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, did he br- pick this out for us? Uh, no, I did just now at oh, the okay. local package store near your house. But he gave me a wad That's of cash. Fair, we, we're we're lacking for someone needs to open up a, and this will happen very shortly that someone will open up like a fancy beer and wine store in Altadena. There it is doesn't exist yet uh, a, an article I just came across on McSweeney's, <laughs> and the headline is "I am an artisanal attorney." <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. That's awesome. So. Uh, Brian and his friend Alan have this uh, show on YouTube wherein they review the best old-fashioned chocolate-covered donuts in Los Angeles, California. Brilliant. They're on a quest to find the best one. And it's only the old fa- the chocolate old fashions, am I correct? Only chocolate old fashions. Bec- they do not do uh, the glaze, the sprinkle, the twist, the bar, the crawler, or the jelly-filled variety. Yeah, see, that's a niche. That That's 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 how you're going to make the big money. Yeah, you be specific. Niche. Yeah. This, the the, sp- the uh, personal is the universal, Jeffrey. That's, I've, I've heard that from a gentleman I know by the name of Brendan Hughes. Oh, yes. Well, I'm quoting Ming Cho Lee when I say that. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the personal. So they're going deep because uh, Alan and Brian love old fashioned chocolate donuts. And guess what else? Do, chocolate covered old fashioned donuts. Do tell me. Old, only chocolate old fashioned donuts. Only. He, they sent some for us to eat on the air. On the that air. That always goes well. <laughs> it does. Luckily, it's not crunchy and a we're bag of them. Wait until we're two beers in. <laughs> Maybe we should. Okay, so we'll wait. So later on, we're going to have another break. Yeah. And we'll have uh, some donuts. How many? Let me. I've got the box right here. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Fucking Christ! The, Four donuts. They, yep, yep. And Brendan, I'm I'm looking in this bag. There appears uh, to be the remnants of, of, a, of other donuts <laughs> sitting in there. Uh, Did you uh, maybe on the way over here? Uh, look, get a uh, little ahead of the game. There was a shift change, and we screwed up the head count. <laughs> So we're not exactly sure one of them may have gotten away. Uh-huh. That's what I well, I'm gonna eat a little piece of your slobberdon donut right now. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah, slobberdon. Ew, gross. No, 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 no. <laughs> Unacceptable. Like no chewing on the air. Did your sister just turn turn off? <laughs> My sister turn it all off and just disgust. picked up her desktop and threw it on the floor. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, that's tasty. It's what, 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 uh, what's our, is this a particular donut place that we're, is this their top donut shop? Uh, well, this is a uh, donut shop that is currently remaining nameless, but I, I'm going to ask Brian what it was. Okay. Or maybe he can call in and find out himself. Oh, and yeah. he has a special offer. Speaking of these, these are, I think, their favorites of all the ones that they've, they've, uh, because uh, they haven't done donut and burger yet. What's donut and burger? Like you put a burger inside a donut? Nope. It's just a place where you can buy a burger or a donut. <laughs> but that, it's the best donuts I've I've had in ages. You know where the best donut I ever had was? 
Mexi- Mexico City. Oh, good. I thought you were going to say donut friend, which poo on donut no, friend. No, poo, poo on the poo on poo, the poo, place. Poo, poo, poo on you. Poo, poo. Uh, I, me, me and Emily had a five-hour layover at Benito Juarez Airport. Okay. Which is in Mexico City. Uh-huh. Ciudad de Mexico. Uh-huh. Uh, which is a lot of red rooftops I noticed as we landed. Okay. And because we had a five-hour layover, uh, we were like, first of all, let's find out who Benito Juarez is. Mm-hmm. And he is a former president of Mexico and the only indigenous president they've ever had. Interesting. How many indigenous presidents have we had, Jeff? Zato. Zato. Zed. Zed. Zato not, Zed, not, the indigenous not even, president. Not even close. No. Not even but, close to Wynonna one. Why Leduc, uh, Ralph Nader's running mate, was... Oh, yeah. see, you're right, and you wrote it for him. Any case, fudging. So we walked out into the neighborhood, and yep. we're like, "Oh my god, there's a bunch of interesting donut shops here in this neighborhood bordering uh, Benito Juarez Airport in Mexico City." Okay, and I had and one. You had a donut. Yeah, it was, was it awesome. a sp- uh, special like a uh, son? Of, did it did it feel Mexicano or was it an American donut all the way? It was an American donut all the way, but it was so fluffy. Mm. It was like eating air that's really bad for you. Well, donut friend is this place. In uh, your neck of the woods in Highland Park, where mm-hmm. they it's like artisanal these, these gourmet yeah donut stupid. places where it's like five dollars for your base donut and then you can add toppings for it's toppings. like getting a fucking pizza yeah and it's like you end up with this thing like who wants I feel like all the donut flavors that you would need have already been created right you don't right. really you need, don't need you don't need to put Fritos on top of your donut yeah exactly it's, it's like, like, to make your yeah. experience better <laughs> maple bacon and kale chips. Mm-hmm. Okay, no. <laughs> um, is there anything? Oh, how do how do our listeners oh. watch? Enjoy the donut dudes. Well, uh, surf on over to the YouTube's. Yep, uh, and uh, type in donut dudes, the donut dudes, the yes. uh, with the uh, definite article. And there's a special offer, Jeffrey, for Dad Jeans listeners. Oh, do tell. Uh, the donut dudes currently have 88 subscribers, which 88. is plenty more than the Dad Jeans podcast. Does uh, on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, they want to hit 100 by the end of October. Okay. See, they're so much better at this than we are. They're so much better. Like we set our goals. I feel like in my first, our first week, I was like, we're going to have a thousand listeners by next week. <laughs> and then we just petered out on that goal. Yeah. Well, you know, but I mean, like, you know, our, I think, feel like our listeners are worth five casual listeners because they're all so serious about us. That could be. Um, if, if they do so with a dad jeans listener, the donut dudes will send the lucky subscriber a dozen chocolate old fashioned donuts so just wait. Type, what are you saying? Meaning, if you are their hundredth subscriber, oh, if you're their hundredth, yeah. So just type "dad jeans" in the comment section when you subscribe, and if you are lucky, if you're lucky number one hundred, you win. Okay, let me let me let me let me pick apart this incentive. Mm-hmm. Is do you not instantaneously see when you click the subscribe button what number of subscriber you are? Yes. So what's to why would someone? Register to be 80, number 89. Like, is, is, oh. the, is the thought... Well, that, then they have to get their friends to do it without telling them about the donut thing. So, oh, yeah. See, that's smart. Okay. So, yeah. Sam Sadden, essentially. <laughs> yeah. this, that's who we're talking Sam, to. Sam, if you're listening now, go... <laughs> get and, 11 friends <laughs> to sign up for the Donut Dudes podcast <laughs> yeah. and watch them do it and then click number uh, 100 and you will get a free dozen donuts. Yeah, that's like juking the stats. But you know who should get the donuts? Yeah, who? Uh... uh Jorley Sarmchow in uh <laughs> That's true. You should share them. Yeah, you should share them with your with your friend who, no, who Dorm because he likes uh he likes starches. The, yeah, the war he feels like there's a war on starches. Yeah. What the fuck is his name? It's something Jorl, like Jorl Jorl Flash. Sam Chow. I don't know, something like that. Gordon Sumchow. Yeah, yeah. Share them with Gordon Sumchow. Stromblad. Stromblad. That sounds right. We're getting closer. Storm and Norman Stromblad. <laughs> anyway, uh, we yeah, yeah. So the, he's the one who should get the dozen donuts, obviously. Yes. And these are really good. And LA does do donuts very well. It does pizza terribly and donuts well. That is true. That is true. Uh, there's a good pizza place near me. De- uh, bagels. Not on your life, man. No way. Egg and cheese on a roll. Get out of here. You who, you think you're getting one of those sandwiches? No, yeah, when no. You move to LA? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. No, you're never gonna no, find yeah, one no, of those no, fucking no. things. Uh, when we have. Ba- Pay bagel breakfasts at our house. I yeah. I insist we get vegetable cream cheese. And Emmy, Emily is like, you know, this is what she the story she tells me every time. She's like, I can't fucking believe you're getting vegetable schmear 
And you need to know that I used to work in a in a bagel joint, and it was a particular type of person that ordered vegetable schmear, and she uses mm. the actual word schmear. What's and I'm the, like, uh, well, exactly. Was my next question too, yeah. and I was like, well, what's the particular type of person? And she was like, you. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she has a bit of a forked tongue sometimes. Yeah, but you, but it, it makes you wonder, like about all those men she was meeting with the vegetable schmears before, and she didn't job. know she'd yeah. be marrying one of those yeah. assholes. And she was like, these fucking guys, these fucking these guys, particular guys. I, I, you know, I, as soon as I'm out of this bagel place, I'm never seeing one of these vegetable schmeros again. <laughs> And then she up and marries one. So she up and marries an everything bagel with vegetable schmiro. Is it was I also used to uh, I used to work at Borders Books in uh, Ann Arbor, and uh, I, there was a, a particular type of gentleman that I referred to as the weenie dad, and he <laughs> invariably would be wearing shorts and uh, white socks with Birkenstocks. Oh dear God! Yeah, the weenie dad. And were the were the white socks pulled all the way up? Uh, I would assume, yeah. I would assume. Let's let's talk about. I don't. The- I don't think if you're wearing socks with Birkenstocks, there's really no. You can shove them down. You can pull them up. You're not getting away with that look. No. Yeah. No. How? Oh God, no. Yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're a uh, fucking uh, John uh, Turturro in Night of, which I finally finished. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Sad what happened to everybody. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't a happy ending. Not per um, se. We'll talk about that at some point. But what yeah. were you going to say? You have another thing? I think that's it about, about the Donut Dudes. Thank you for our micro-sponsorship, you guys. Yes, thank you we so much. We really appreciate Amazing. it. It's and very I've exciting. Actually, I, I was playing dumb for the sake of our radio repartee, but I have watched uh, the Donut Dudes videos, and they're great. They're really funny. They are. They're great, and they're just like, you know, quick little, I love I love the length of them. Yeah, they're very short, they're little like three stingers. minutes, yep. fast, fast and furious. You're in, you're out. They're very you creative. To, you do not need to live in L.A. to enjoy what they're, what they're throwing at you. Yeah, they're popping, popping, popping with ideas. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, Allen, we thank thee. And we will very eat, much so. eat of these donuts. Yes, we will partake of them. Yes. Um, so, I've got uh, some front matter. Ah, this is a matter that occurs up front. It is indeed, which we haven't uh, done in a while. No, no, uh, we have not. We've kind of done it, but we just haven't called it out by name. I don't think. Perhaps not. Um, number one, I have I've been remiss in saying this for like months now, and it is uh, it's caused a huge rift in my extended family. Oh dear God! Um, I've been subjected to a lot of abuse uh-huh. uh, via Twitter via. Uh, other forms of social media, letters, um, death threats, <laughs> a lot. It's, it's caused me a lot of pain. Brick bats. This yes, brick bats, cat o nine tails. <laughs> um, I've had all all manner of of shenanigans pulled on me because what happened, Brendan? Apparently, on our spectacular. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I announced that we were about to play my brother in law. Uh, Mark Smith's phone call. Did he get edited out by accident? And I don't know if he got edited out or if we just somehow skipped it the night of, uh, but apparently he did. Oh, damn it. We had many technical difficulties that night. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it got past the QA stage. I remember his. Uh, yeah, I do too, exactly. And I, I had thought it already. that we talked about it. Yeah, we apparently, did. Apparently, my sister told me that she's listened to the episode twice. She did? She's combed through it. For, uh, just to, to to know, to make sure that when she was making these death threats upon her brother, <laughs> that it was, that it wasn't being done in vain. Oh, I can't believe that. Yeah. I knew that. That's the danger of this kind of thing. And his, what was his? You remember? It was um, people who, something about being nice. or Oh, yes. People who are, too, who are too nice or something like that. Something to that effect. I don't know. Can we just can we put it on the agenda to next episode? We will play his call. Oh, yeah, totally. And we will respond to it. Yeah, and listeners, if okay. you ever have, if you did not get to take a part in the spectacular and want to join in in any of our segments, feel free to call us always. Absolutely at three two three four eight four four three eight three. Most notably, advise me, bro. We haven't done one of those in a while. No, that's true. I was thinking tonight we could use some advise me, bro. Yeah, because we're just uh, we're just killing it in the dad department. I yeah. guess. Gor- Gorman totally know what we're Gorman Mearschlau. If you're listening, oh yeah, we could uh, use some advice from you in particular. Gorman. Yes, please. Um, yeah. I hope he knows who we're talking about. I, yeah, I hope he does. Zorn Shamblad. There you go. Zorn Shamblad. Shamblad. Is that right? That sounds right. Zorn Shamblad. Yes, please. that's what he sounds like. Call us back, please. Um, okay, so that was a big one. 
uh, your birthday. We missed your birthday. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Brendan. Thank you, Jeffrey. How many years young are you? I'm 42, and I turned 40 on the air. Do you remember that? No. I mean, we started this when I was 39 and uh, 10 months. Oh, oh, okay. Wow, we've been doing this for three years? No, no two years two and change. Years of, Isn't that crazy? Jesus, my life. I know, I know. Now, now one of us is 40 fucking two. And 42 is a very random sounding number, except for the Douglas Adams books. It, uh, it's uh, evenly divisible. That's, that's fun. That's true, yeah. Six and seven go into it. Jesus, Brendan. I just realized. What's that? You're twice 21. <gasps> oh, God. The most important birthday. You are two of them. I'm now two 21-year-olds, so now yes. I need to drink. I have to have two drinks at a time. The last rite of passage you have now gone through twice. Jesus H. Christ. That's insane. Yep. My 21st birthday, my friend, hmm? was a goddamn fuck show. <laughs> was it? Yeah, because, you know, it's his 21st birthday. Yep. It celebrated in Davis Square. Yeah, uh, Somerville, Massachusetts. Went to okay. Red Bones. Yeah, I started the night at got some Mexican donuts. Yeah, did they have Mexican donuts? I started that at Gargoyles. No, that's, a, that's a sex term. Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just made it into a sex term. We, we got some Mexican donuts. Oh, Mexican donuts from the early story. Right. right. Uh, yes. Sorry. I was dating at the time a young woman named Biz. Mm. Uh, what was her name lovely gal? Biz don't sleep. Biz don't sleep. Yeah. And uh, we had a, we had a great time. And at the end of the day, so like I drank, I started drinking with like Metaxa old fashions, and it just got worse from oh, there. It was fucking Brendan. disgusting. You started with old fashions. Yeah, I started with old fashions. Metaxa, what is that? It's it, this like it's made out of like pine sap in Cyprus. It's it's disgusting, unbelievable. And that was kind of a dare, but I was like, fuck it, I'll just drink the whole thing. I I'm had 21. God knows how many. And then so Biz is driving me home, yeah, <laughs> driving me home, sleep. and we're like. 200 feet from my door mm. where she would ostensibly park come inside we're dating you Give know you a mexican donut <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh i'm like wait no stop the car oh, and no. i like out i go oh, throw up on the side of the road wow and then i get back in the car but you remember all this so that's oh yeah plus. i slept for two days oh god but anyway i get back <laughs> i get back in the car and my hands are all like shiny it's fucking disgusting mm. And she like drives silent. We drive silently the rest of the way. And I'm like, "So are you coming in?" Or uh, <laughs> and she was like, "I don't think so." Yeah, no, not tonight. <laughs> Sorry, Brendan. Yep, yep. Good luck. Uh, at your worst, <laughs> your lowest times. moment. Happy birthday to you, anyway. Oh, thank. <laughs> but my 42nd birthday was a lot tamer. It was I, much tamer. I went out for pizza with Oscar. Yeah, Emily had to work. Awesome to Jane's. No, we went to Foliero's. Oh, and mm -hmm. uh, then Good I went place. to then I brought him home and yeah. I watched the night of and oh. I went and I went to bed. You know what? That's that's. I think I had a martini. That's a fantastic <laughs> evening for a dad. Mm -hmm. That's you. You got everything you you could ask for. I checked every box. You really did. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't. We are. That's we don't. We don't need to be doing much more than that at our age. No, 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 no. Um, number two, bring it. Last week or two weeks ago, we ended on a cliffhanger. We did. Uh, yes we did yes oh my god i had just gotten into we were i was i was feeling down in the dumps because sarah's computer and purse had been stolen yep contents of the purse she had our children's social security cards christ don't ask me why she had our children's yeah, social security yeah. cards in her mm -hmm. purse hmm. in case she needs to leave the country i guess, I guess. or I, apparently she was prepare yeah. for their retirement pension federal retirement pension yeah i don't know she, i'm sure she had some sort of like some some sort of action on the side that she was like yep if i need to go i'll get the kids yeah i've got there we only need one of our livers or something like that yeah well i don't know I, really you only need a liver or a kidney one of those okay point being you know kids organs fetch a lot on the market oh i see you're and they make a full recovery they grow it back you're envisioning a future in which my children had been sliced apart by foreigners but then they grow back together you're a xenophobe <laughs> Um, oh, but, because uh, of social security. I don't know. What yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Anymore. I why they would need their social security card to have their organs stolen. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's helpful just to make sure they're legit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sure the the organ thieves are uh, kind these, of like uh, American yeah. nat nationals, right? Yeah, because <laughs> we get a lot more. We for do those. have better kidneys. I, I'll grant you that. I'm not a. I'm not a. You know, 
American kidney supremacist or anything, but, mm-hmm. but it's, it's documented. Known. It's, known. it's documented. If yeah, you look at the wonderful bell, tap water, the bell curve. Yeah, there's fewer heavy metals in our <laughs> tap water. That's true. Um, <laughs> so she had the uh, she had her computer stolen. She had her backup drive was in her computer bag, so that was stolen as well. Mm-hmm. So we lost all of our photos. Ugh. For like 10 years, or all of her photos for like the almighty. last 10 years. I have no idea where Emily's are, and she's a much better photographer. Yeah. She, she better be on the stick. She better be on the stick. You should look into that, because these are things we need to worry about in this day and age. Yeah, because it's not like they're as extant. I've, yeah, as, as I've just learned. Um, but uh, that, her purse, of course, all the credit cards, all the everything. Um, I'm sure there is other stuff. Blood oh, samples. The, the, the car keys, which... The the fucking the new newfangled uh, two seventy five five hundred what try five hundred for our Mazda car that is f- yeah I know why because it's got a little hinge on it and it folds up like a switchblade so you press oh, the button yeah, the, 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 the thing the comes out Volkswagen do that too and that's that, a two hundred dollar mechanism apparently oh a, a spring and a mm-hmm, hinge mm-hmm, go mm-hmm. down to Home Depot I can get you set up for two dollars on that thing I know we should just make our own <laughs> make our own yeah. keys. Probably do it with a little, uh, I'm sure, with a little circuit board. Yeah, yeah, man. Soldering Probably. iron. Yeah, exactly. AM radio. Um, so we got all this shit stolen, and it was, and we were, uh, we were fighting, and it was just an ugly scene. <sighs> um, how are you supposed to continue to get along when something like that happens? Well, it's we were almost divorced, ah. uh, and as we were at the lawyers, the artisanal lawyers, <laughs> <laughs> filling out our paperwork. Uh-huh. Um, signing on the line that is she gets a call from the police and she says he says I think uh, we, or we got a report about someone stealing purses off of porches in Highland Park would you be able to identify this person and Sarah's like yeah I totally would oh um, right because she saw her Sarah as our listeners saw her know. yes exactly yeah. late eyes saw her stealing the stuff but didn't think that her stuff was being stolen because she was like, who would come up on a porch and steal some? She thought it was a male lady or something, you know? Yeah. Um, who would come up on a porch and steal a purse and a computer bag? Like, behind So did a, Sarah have to do the lineup? No, she didn't. With the usual suspects? So now what happened next, three days later, after that, we know that this is hanging out around out there and the cop is like, well, uh, we might come out to you to show you some pictures and you can sh- tell us who you thought it was. Uh, but three days later... She gets another call and he says, Hey, we caught someone driving a stolen car and open up the trunk and all it's filled with stolen merchandise and your shit was in there. That's crazy. Yeah. So D- uh, deep listeners of Dad Jeans will remember mm-hmm. that your bike was stolen and you fucking found it and stole it and back. And I stole it back while you were there. You were, you were, you were my, what were you? You were my getaway car. I what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So somehow things come back to us. It's kind of insane. It's a little bit of a somehow we have. I, I think it's our listeners. I think it is too. I think you're right. Because we put it out to the universe right. and then they're like, uh, oh, no, no, no. Crime will not visit. Well, they pray for us. The Dinsmore Coles. Yes, they probably do pray. Yeah, we have a lot of prayers uh, in our crowd. But um, so she got everything back. Every single thing that was stolen, she got back. In every To the JPEG. To the JPEG, insane. Not, not a thing was missing. And ma- amazing. And your your kids, um, uh, what do you call those? They're still uh, here. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. And their the kids and their kidneys. Cards. The social security cards. They still have well, n- their nine were, digits. Their kidneys were missing. Are there nine? Oh, they're kidding. Okay. Yeah. Well, dialysis, you make wonderful friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a small price to pay. Yeah, every week going playing pinochle. Yeah. yeah. Well, the quick cops were actually like, if you want to get these back. The kidneys. We, we got a little. If you want to get no, if you want to get the shit back, we're gonna have to take some kidneys. <laughs> They've got a little graph system going down at the police. God, horrible. The, but now I know where to go if I need a, an American national kid's kidney. Yeah, exa- they've got like a beautiful like storefront. <laughs> I bet uh, their lobby's storefront. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's really a, it's all made of kidneys. We've redone the lobby. Uh, but uh, so, <laughs> um, that's it, man. And then uh, what else do we have? Oh, one more thing. Uh, this is from listener Matt Ransford Matt. and friend of the podcast. Good day. Um, grand old friend of the podcast. Indeed. Um, and I have come around to his way of thinking. Uh, Brian L. Perkins, I'm going to call you out <gasps> for your spectacular advice about loading the dishwasher. Oh. It saves zero time 
to put all of the knives uh, in the right compartment. Why is that? Same compartment. Why do you say that? Because you're either doing the work on the front end or on the back end. Oh, mathematically speaking. Yes. It takes just as much time to separate everything into the correct compartments before going or after. into the dishwasher as it does to do it coming out of the dishwasher. So you're, you're, you're just transplacing time. Mm-hmm. Displacing time. Uh, like the yep. Eureka moment when uh, when uh, the Greek guy lowered his balls into a bird bath or whatever. Exactly. Um, but it's 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 also very very difficult. It's very very difficult unless you have some kind of a super uh, dishwasher in which the compartments are large enough to hold all of these items. Like mm. you can't fit all of your forks into the dishwasher at one time. I might as well or bandwagon this and say that sometimes the, the forks might actually start spooning each other and then uh, you can't get that soap between them. Th- there you go. There you go. So we're going to, we're going to discount that one. Well, I don't know. I don't want to go that Unless far. Brian can call us back at our dad jeans hotline and explain himself a little bit. Uh, Here's where I I'm, deeper, I, I'm breaking with Brian on this one, and I'll tell you why. Oh, okay. Because how quickly how quickly you shift I the know. winds the winds have changed. It's true, Mr. Hughes. We all walk as triplets, Jeffrey. Mm. We all walk as triplets. There is the past us, the present us, and the future us. That's wonderful. And we must choose their status. Yes, yeah. yes. And we must rank them. And that's your that's that's that was your way of looking at that. Yeah, is that you're you are be, being kind to your future self, mm-hmm. saving your future self less work. Yes, that was your initial reaction, and so you're demoting present you below future you. So then the question there is, where go. do you put past you? Well, above, I, past above you future exist. you. Let's let's pretend past you still exists and made and made There's all these no horrible fuck ups. It's a fact; it doesn't exist. Okay, but wait a second. <laughs> okay, the me yes. that decided he liked theater. Yep. In 1988, okay, continues to fuck up my life in the present by having made that decision. Um, I mean, in very that had a ripple effect to now in various ways. And that kid was a fucking idiot. And there is so so like past you, so many people wake up at 40 and they look around and they're like, "Oh my god, so much of my life was determined by what I f- figured I might like at 17." Sure. Okay, I mean, I hear all that, but it's still not a, there's nothing you can do to affect it. So. True. Therefore, it's just. That ship has sailed. It's just a, it's just a, it's, it's a figment of your imagination. That is definitely true. Oh, that's absolutely true. But it's an image that you carry of like former you. Now, do you hate former you or do you love and forgive former you for being so stupid? Because inevitably past you is a fucking idiot compared to present you. Oh, of course. That's life. And so you have to look back. So like, can you forgive past you for being so dumb? No. Me neither. No. Past you was, it's, it's, it's all about past you and you should spend the rest of your days lamenting all of the what mistakes an idiot you made you were. 20 years and ago. And as present you marches on, he keeps leaving past versions of you that are dumber than present you. Okay. This is why, by the way, did we already talk about, I feel like we're, I have deja vu, but. Yes. Do we already did this whole thing? Yes. Did about I, but I talk why, about my Why you're saying people are stupid because. Why they stop. Because they, they are afraid of, yes, we had a, a big argument about this and I disagree with you wholeheartedly. That they stop because they're afraid of <laughs> hating past them so much. Yes. Was this part, part of what was erased last week? No. Oh shit! So I just wasted everybody's time. That's okay. I'm gonna hit the well, button. we're gonna we're gonna get into it again though. Yeah. At some point, because I, I'm I'm uh, this is a dad. Oh, we need to do another dad versus dad. We haven't had a dad versus dad. Oh, we that. haven't a dad. Let's versus do this. Dad. Let's do this. Let's do some philosophical shit right now. No. Oh, at some point. Um, because we have too much to get through tonight. We have a lot to get through. Uh, do we want our, our, our new segment? Do we want to start with our new segment? Let's start with our new segment. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a new segment that just has a name now. It is a segment that we have done for a long time. But my goal, Brendan, is to uh, take as m- much time away from the front matter as possible and start the front load the segments oh yeah yeah i've always i've always wanted i feel like we spend 40 minutes in the front matter right and then people are like are they ever going to do a segment you know yeah so it's like nice to but the joke is on them because we do we quote unquote do a segment but we just keep talking it's exactly the the same same thing thing. (laughs) exactly there's just a thing thing there is a feeling of having begun i suppose exactly yeah yeah so uh here's our new segment it's called newspapers a lot of stuff going on over here over there we're gonna tell you about the world because the world is important newspapers we peep the news (laughs) 
You're laughing. You didn't even hear the theme song. I know, but I love it anyway because I heard it before on your laptop. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's pretty good. Um, this is our current events segment. <laughs> yes, because we do talk about current events now and then as dads yes. in America in the 21st century. Yes. And we have a huge current event that happened last night, Brendan. The most hugest, uh, at least this week. But the hugest, I think, uh, the most uh, eagerly anticipated and desperately feared yes. uh, event to occur in this horrible, never-ending, toe-curling, <laughs> stomach-churning election cycle. Yes, which was the first presidential debate featuring a woman in the history of the United States. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say something derogatory to uh, myself. Uh, you go into this. I'm going to turn this light off. Oh, okay. That's a fine idea. It's, it's bugging me a little bit. And uh, you could say, but what about Sarah Palin? What about uh, Carly Fiorina? But those are all, you know, the primary debates. This is the presidential debate. And I didn't realize that there is a difference, but it's true. There is. Where there's the, uh, you get your primary debates, you get your vice presidential debates, but then there's a goddamn presidential motherfucking debate. And I was looking at that background, and then I was looking at the red hue of her. So you watched it. Yeah. Let's start there. Uh, of, yeah, and I was looking at the red hue of her outfit. Okay. And she just looked presidential. And he looked like shit. Like, it was as if it, he pull, she pulled one of those. You know how John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon were the first televised debate, televised yes, debates ever? absolutely. And John F. Kennedy had sex about 10 minutes before he walked on stage. Right. And he was relaxed as a motherfucker. Yeah, he was just uh, cool. He was a cat. He was just like a right. slithering cat. And meanwhile, he... Tricky dick, old tricky dick with his he, he fucking was, handkerchief. Yeah, and, and his five o'clock shadow because yeah. JFK had people in Nixon's makeup room. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shut up. I didn't know that. That's that's how you win, that's how you win the president. Wait, so friend. that was makeup gate? Long before yeah, oh, water yeah. gate. Yeah, yeah. Makeup gate. He was like he yeah he had people on the inside he had some moles who were making Richard Nixon Nixon look tired oh, and haggard. Oh, I've never heard that story. I look like a escaped convict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looked like a ten pound bag of shit in a two pound sack. <laughs> I uh, directed a play called Jackie in American Life, which is really fucking funny uh -huh. by a guy named Gip Hoppy, and in it, the, it's all about Jacqueline. Kennedy on asses. Uh -huh. And there's this, and I also played JFK in mm -hmm. it. And there's a part where uh JFK wow. during this debate back and forth, instead of saying anything substantive, they just talk about how they appear. Uh -huh. So JFK is like, notice how my dark suit sets off my boyish good looks. <laughs> and 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 uh Nixon is like, Did I shave today? You be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty great. Um, yeah, no, I it felt like okay, so let me start. I've, I took some notes. You did watch the entire debate. Uh, no, I was in and out because I was traveling home on the train. So I was watching on my phone. I listened a little, you know, okay. I, I watched and then I was putting Oscar to bed. So I was like, okay, so you, you, you were there for, you were there for half, maybe, maybe half, maybe half. Yeah. Um, did you start at the beginning? Yeah, I listened to the beginning and then the train went into the tunnel right after both of their first answers. I see. Did you experience it differently viewing it versus listening to it? Yes, I did. Very much so. I started watching before the train went under the tunnel. Then Emily picked me up at the train and I we were listening on the radio and he sounded a lot better on the radio. His optics really? were fucking horrible last night. Yeah. Um, like the, when they were evenly matched, the, it's amazing the difference visually because when they were evenly matched audioly, like yeah. they were at the exact same level and they're compressed and so they were saying the exact same thing at the exact same like pitch and volume and stuff yeah um he entered an arena that he didn't belong in and like was given a much more of a fighting chance yeah but then on tv he had this like rumpled suit and he looks like hell yeah he looked terrible and and he's he just like and his and body language is like uh, so off-putting like it, horrible he looked weak to me like he did not look he yeah he, looked he looks erratic. like he's losing a golf game and yeah. he hates losing yeah yeah, exactly. And he was impatient and like ready to get out of there. That's very interesting because I've heard the, I mean, there's, there's two, I thought he came out of the gate. Like I thought he was fucking rambling from me too. From day, oh, from the minute moment one. he opened his mouth. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, he took two 
I think there were two responses where he chose not to start jumping in, but it really was very early on. Like the thing, I think that when Hillary said that Donald started, first of all, she called him Donald, which I was, <laughs> I was waiting to see what she would call him. And that was gorgeous. Just oh, yeah. Calling him Donald. And then because, he started, you know, to get every ruffled, single right? person who works with that guy calls him Mr. Trump. Oh, is that true? Yeah. His son-in-law calls him Mr. Trump. Like <sighs> he does not allow anyone around him to call him anything but Mr. Trump. Oh, so like she stum- she comes in with Donald and it was just like from moment one, he's on edge. But like there are people, and I don't know if this is just like in retrospect, people wanting to equalize it a little bit because it was so much of a goddamn motherfucking blowout. That like people are like, yeah, he was he was holding his own for the first half hour, but then it it went bad. But no, I, no, he, he was fucking a, a miserable wreck. From it was like me one. up there. Yeah, like I find him kind of relatable because he's like underprepared, mm-hmm. underread, and overconfident. Wow. Yeah. No. That's that's uh, I I well, the confidence is very. I, it's hard for me to put my finger on that. Like. It's bluster. Yeah. It's New York confidence. It's inside. He must feel very tiny, right? I watching this. I was like, this guy from the moment he was born has been told everything he fucking farts out of his lips is gold. Yeah. And so he thinks I'll just go out there and what he's like, you, if you watch enough auditions, like I have seen, like I've sat through like 5,000 auditions Uh and you get the odd actor who. It's the weirdest thing. These people are psycho, but they're like, I'm just going to go out there and wing it and see what happens. Right. And make up a monologue on the spot, and I'm going to be a legend. What? Yeah. This happens all the time. And, and you watch. They and you, come in without a monologue? Yeah. What? And they just start making something up. You've seen people do this. Yeah. And it is, you you want to die while uh, it's happening. Is it? It's like a one-man show that has not been written? Yeah. 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 And they're doing voices and funny things and like it's uh it's just amazing. And then inevitably, oh, that, invariably, oh. they always at the end they go scene. Oh no, that As people really do that. It. Only those people do that. Oh my god, no one else does that. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I mean, you're totally right. And I think that I think the attack on him, whether or not you use these specific words, is that he's a spoiled brat. Yeah, like, that's all I kept thinking as I was watching this seventy-year-old man. Yeah, I'm like, he's a spoiled brat. There are, and there are many seventy-year-old men who are. This is fucking. We're watching Veruca Salt running for president <laughs> right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you don't mean the band from the '90s, do you? No, of course. Okay. My God, they were um, great. You know his new his new Twitter nickname is Brave Hair. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that? No, that's amazing. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, so the first, the, I, I don't remember when the first moment was that I like really cringed. Like there was a moment when he, and I don't know if it was his dad's loan or when he said he didn't pay taxes like that. Did you hear that part? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, that makes me smart. That, that makes part? me smart. Yeah, exactly. No, he, 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 there was, there was a moment when he went off. I think it was in that section about his intellect, about how smart he is. Oh, Jesus. And it was, I don't know how any human on this planet could hear that and not cringe. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, he's so... I have the best words, he once God, said. He's so unbearably awful to watch. Yeah. Um, and I thought she was just like poised. Like there are people, you know, like the critique today is she had a couple of rehearsed moments. Like she said the trumped up trickle down. Oh, that. yeah. And like stumbled a little. And it's true, his, but that's, but that's what a debate is. Like yeah. that's what you expect from a presidential debate. Yeah. And like, she was nervous too. Like she had to, this is a big moment for her and she has to like. Sure. But she was fucking cool as a cucumber, man. And yeah. she just got cooler as the night went on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could see the relief wash over her. Oh, and I God. actually, she kind of won my heart when he just rambled and rambled and finally, and she wasn't interrupting him and just yeah. letting him do his thing yeah. and finally stopped and she went, Woo! Yeah. That I was like, oh, she's great. But okay, how great. horrible was that to watch? Like two and a half minutes of him just flailing. Like I know. Hey, but it, he wants the job. So unhinged to me. I know. Yeah. It is if he has anyone's vote left in the country, this is what it comes down to me, Jeff. Yeah. It is a bat a waged battle 
between it's not good and evil. It's serious and not serious. Like, is America a country of serious people doing serious things? Okay. As it once was. Yeah. Or is it a country of people who are like, he's just like... Oh, ding dong, asshole ding. calling. <laughs> Rocky Horror, happened? anyone? What? Rocky Horror, which is going to be on Fox on October 20th. I know. Yeah. Interesting. Starring, oh, that's Sarah just came home. Oh, Laverne Cox. Uh, starring Laverne Cox. Yeah. Yep, I've seen uh, some footage. Oh, yeah? How does it, it look? Looks great. Really? I'm kind of like, I'm like, go Fox. Jesus, this is going to be great. Yeah, I watched Grease. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a thing they're trying to do. I liked, the, I, I liked the energy of it, but it was like, they cast the most milk toast fucking actors in that thing. I'm yeah. like, you've got the entire world to choose from? Blend some. Yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah. The two, yeah, Sandy and Danny. They yeah. weren't even singers. Like, Blend some actors. Put, put a singer in there. Put Josh Groban in there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what do I know about Josh Groban? I do. Monday at school. Yeah, yeah. He can do it. <laughs> Why not? That'd be amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I was so the, uh, the the thing is, I can't remember what the what first point serious and Oh yeah, yeah. Like it, it, he's not. He's just not a serious person. I've said this before on the podcast. Sure. And there are people in the country who just like want someone who just isn't serious, just like they're not a serious person. Uh-huh. And Obama has always like, he's like, he's so Vulcan, but he's like, I'm a serious person. This is a serious job. We're doing serious things at the end. Sure. Uh, and I, I will be like, have moments of levity, moments of levity and, and, you know, lightness will interrupt what is otherwise an extremely serious enterprise. Yeah. And for Donald Trump and George W. Bush, it's like seriousness will interrupt what is otherwise a completely fluffy, ridiculous enterprise. Hmm. Let me let me let me think about that. Like I, I that I, appeals to his voters too. I can understand that with George W. Bush because George W. Bush just seemed like everything was a lark. Yeah. Um. He's just the ultimate frat boy. But. Donald Trump is so angry and miserable. Like what I see in him is what the stereotype of millennials is, which I don't necessarily believe about millennials, but it's like a lazy sense of entitlement that they don't understand is lazy. Like uh, we've, we've employed a number of millennials in various ways. It's true about them. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> Not across the board, but it could be the young as well. Like it could I think be, yeah, we, we I put was that it way on, too. Yeah. We put it on millennials, but it's that there's something about that. Just like younger people, it takes a while to develop maturity. Sure. Mm-hmm. But with Donald Trump, like it feels to me as if he just thinks that things in life should come easily to him through sheer force of personality. Right. And it's like, you know, in the college class, like kids like plagiar kids are plagiarizing left and right now because it's so easy to do and they don't understand why that's bad. Uh-huh. Like, so it, you don't, if you don't even understand why plagiarism is, plagiarism is bad, like it's not necessarily that you're unserious, but you think that cheating is a legitimate way to get through life. Because and you, you think everyone else does it. I see. And you haven't been exposed to the higher truth. The higher truth, sure. The the nobility of hard work. Right. Or the nobility of anything. Yeah. Yeah. In his case. Yeah. So uh, to me, I like I don't know that I would I, I I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think there's probably a certain percentage of his his of his supporters who are doing it because it's fun and he was on TV. You know, the, I don't know if that's the bulk of them. I feel like the bulk of them probably look at him and they think he has some kind of wisdom because in America, rich equals smart. Ugh. But if he had a Robert oh, Reicher thing. Clinton is fucking rich too. She's, that's one thing we never mentioned. She's incredibly she's rich. She's made a lot of money. Yeah. Like she doesn't go around talking about how much money she's made, but she's got right. a lot of money. And if she, okay, so, so <clears throat> Sorry, go if, ahead. if her... If his father, Robert Reich, was saying this, if his, if, if his father gave him... Robert two, Reich is Donald Trump's father? Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's the twist breaking at the end news. Of, the, of the second one. Wow. Uh, Newspapers is break, <laughs> breaking news tonight. <laughs> uh, if uh, if he had taken the money that he got from his father, right now he's worth, what, $4 billion, something like that. He says 10, but it's four, I think is the conventional wisdom. I think the conventional wisdom is he's worth significantly less than that. He's worth less, less than $500 million. Oh, yeah, which would be great. Yeah. Um, 
Just so whatever he's worth, he, if he had taken the money that he received as a gift from his father, the two hundred million or whatever in the seventies, and just invested it all in an index fund and never touched it, he right. would have twelve billion dollars right now. Right. Yeah. So, so he would have been smarter to not ever do anything. Right. So all he did was fuck himself over. But here's I I don't know about that argument. Like I hate Donald Trump's fucking guts, and I think he's a miserable idiot. But I don't know that that is. Like, like, you should just not do anything or try anything, and then you'd be richer. Devote like, your life to I don't charitable know that that's, works. Well, or like you, could a squirrel flying you could do You could be a Rockefeller, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, don't, like, go and, like, he's he's just been dicking and, around and building me, shit. Yeah, and trying to sell steaks. Yeah, and he's and he's made Manhattan his sandbox. What he should have done yeah. is fucking be a benevolent human being and learn about the world and, like, solve water and shit like that yeah but he gives zero dollars to charity it's it's, it's amazing this guy it's amazing um here's a couple of other things i just wanted to touch on so there was the did you hear about the thing about the the architect where she was talking about oh yeah i know all about that yeah okay uh and his response was to hearing her say yeah i know of this architect who you didn't pay and like you know we all know that this is legion among his people yeah. who have worked among him worked for him it's not an uncommon story that Donald Trump doesn't pay his fucking bills. Um, but she was saying like she was talking about the story and his response was, well, maybe he didn't do a good job. Right. And that was such a missed opportunity. Like you don't fucking sign a contract and then just not fulfill the obligations of the contract. Like maybe he didn't do a good job. You don't stiff a person yeah. who didn't do a good job. Like the, the, you go into a restaurant, and you're like, "Well, I didn't like my meal. You don't get any money." Exactly. <laughs> like that's exactly. not how the world works. Right. It's your fault for liking the look of the restaurant and giving it a try. Yeah. Like you're complicit as well. I heard this great story. You hired him. Yeah. Like exactly. Yeah. Like you Why, looked at his stuff. Like that oh. he he takes no personal responsibility. And I wish to God that had come up. And I'm hoping in the next two debates, at one point, she'll just be like stop blaming everyone else yeah take a moment of personal responsibility because you know what he can't like she could she could full-on say that to him to his face and he would never be able to go there because yep. he does not see it about himself yeah exactly sorry go ahead well i heard this great story about <clears throat> a uh, house contractor mm -hmm. who accepted a job to build a new chimney for a guy who had a, a reputation around town of not paying his contractors, just like Donald Trump. Wait, start the story over again. I was I missed the first part. Okay. He's gonna build a new Sorry, chimney. Listeners. Yeah. He's gonna build in this guy's gonna build a new chimney uh -huh. for this guy, this guy who around town everyone knows doesn't pay his bills and okay. stiffs contractors. Go Minji Stingy. Minji Stingy. Yeah. Old up at up at Minji Stingy Mansion. Right. And so he does the whole job. Yep. And the guy, uh, sure Major. enough, doesn't pay him. Right. Lights up his first fire in his new fireplace. Is this a Zen Cohen? No. What? Okay. And, he and his house fills with smoke, and he's furious. And he looks up the chimney, but he just sees blue sky. So he's like, what the hell's going on here? And then he has another fire at house, fills with smoke again. He's like, what do you do? What is wrong with it? Blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and so he has the guy back up to the house, and he's like, well, pay me, and I'll make your chimney work. And he's like, what? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, pay me. And he finally, like, he f finally coughs up the money. Yeah. The guy takes a brick, climbs up onto the uh, the roof, drops a brick down the chimney, glass smashes, and oh, he walks away with his money because he built that? a window into the chimney. Ah, brilliant! Isn't that great? That is great. Another story I just remembered is that when Rich Richard Pryor did uh, uh, Sunset the Sunset Strip yep. concert movie, yep. he grabbed all the negatives and left with them. Okay. For the same reason. And the director who was famous, not the director of the uh, whoever, the promoter, uh -huh. who was famous for never paying, like he could not get the negatives from, uh, from all the cameras. Nice. Because pr prior went around to all the cameramen and like made a deal. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Look at that. So what, it, what's, what does that tell us about Donald Trump? That someone, someone just needs to fuck him over like that? Well, you need to build in a fail safe thing where he needs you to he must pay you or okay. his th the thing won't function that's your fatherly advice for this <laughs> yeah exactly Fail safe um my final point that mm -hmm. i would like to say about this debate uh the, the part about rosie o'donnell first of all that this is coming up in a presidential debate like he has dragged the entire world down you know that you did you oh that he called part. her a fat pig or something like that 
Well, he had called her a fat pig in the past, and he, um, Hillary was doing a thing about his sexism, and he was like on stage. He was like, he's like, that's not true. That's not true. The only person that's true about is Rosie O'Donnell, and no one feels sorry for her. Like he. He brought this weirdly personal oh vendetta vendetta like on stage a presidential debate right and he still had to cling to it like no one feels sorry for her and it was such a bullying moment yeah like to take this person who he's already insulted enough times in his life and he has such venom and hatred in his soul yeah that he had to like justify it and say, no one feels sorry for her. Like that's what that's what he said on stage as president on this presidential debate. And it was so upsetting to me to like hear yeah. these words come out of a person's mouth at that high like level of society. Like just who gives a fuck about Rosie O'Donnell? I mean, like that you are that small a person inside that you can't let that go. Yeah. He has, he is so far from enlightenment, Brendan. Oh my God. This guy is his first time around. Oh yeah. He is not. Yeah, exactly. He, he is, he's got like a hundred cycles left before he's anywhere near like the second <laughs> level. I know. God. Yeah. The first lesson he has to learn is there are other people in the world. Yeah, it's so yeah, it's oh, really disturbing. God, it's so so I was yeah, but I was I thought Clinton just fucking ran the floor with him. Mm -hmm. I hope to God we're smart enough as a people to to see that and to know that I think we are strength of character and yeah, presidentiality. Presidentiality and like I mean, I guess the deal with Clinton is that people just assume she's lying about everything, like that's why they can hate her. Well, that's that's my other point about all this. Yeah, is <clears throat> um, people will want somebody like the I can have a beer with him kind of thing, right? I would never have. Can you imagine having a beer with Donald Trump? Ugh, oh, the most upsetting beer I've ever had in my life. Yeah, exactly. Or like <laughs> I, I could play around a golf with him. Or Jesus he Christ. hates everyone I hate, Jesus or whatever. Jesus Christ, he'd be giving him Mexican donuts by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think people, for some stupid fucking reason, for yeah. the president of the United States, going way back to when the country was founded and we weren't going to have a king anymore, we were just going to – just one of us, some schmo is going to run the thing because that's the whole concept of the United States. Wait, you're saying pre – Anything like when we had just when when the the white whiteies had settled on the shores, the, the American Re no American Revolution. Pre okay. When they're like, okay, no more. What king, are we going to no do? More kings. What's We're our gonna, next step? This is our next. So some schmo among us is going to be the person who's in charge. Okay. Meanwhile, back in Europe, they all have kings. But guess what? We have just one of one rando. Right. One of us randomly selected. Okay. Right. And. That that ethos going through centuries has led to this like to this thing where there's this warring thing of the the president has to be a sort of a folksy man of the people in order to win a certain voting block. And you have it, to be relatable. You can't be like an intellectual. Yeah, you have to be. That's, uh, that's off putting to people. Yeah, you have to be a human. So Hillary Clinton, even having, if you're smart as fuck, like Bill Clinton, right? Like, you, yeah, you got to be. Oh, shucking and jiving. Shucking He's a fucking Rhodes Scholar. Like, yeah, this man exactly. Is a genius. Yeah, but he has to affect this Southern accent and do the whole like a do to do yep. to do. Yeah, uh, become Foghorn Leghorn or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. So Clinton, having spent her entire life in the public eye, is understandably v more private and protective of her privacy than most people would be. Sure. And also immune and doesn't listen on certain channels because it's like, why would I bother even tuning into that frequency if it's just going to be bullshit that's made up about me because no one knows because yeah. I keep it close to the vest. And so as a result, people, all these conspiracy theories about her, I feel like. Yeah. It, emerge because you can't quite get a bead on her because she is understandably very private and therefore sure. you have to create conspiracies that make her seem more human and then that way you know how to put her in a bucket. You have to, like, the president must be put into a human bucket. Uh, Barack Obama would not necessarily have won, I feel like, on the merit of his total... Uh, um, 
uh, what's the word? Qualifications for oh, the job? Absolutely not. But no. but for the fact that he was he was green. He was a greenhorn. He was a greenhorn. He really and, was a community organizer. There was nothing like there was yeah. some truth to that. To and the attack on him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and he you know he just sort of is a Spock like person. You know what I mean? But we want a Captain Kirk. But is it that this country is half Spock, half half Captain Kirk? That's my point. Oh wow! Wait, I, I feel like that's that's something we need to really investigate. Half Spock, half Captain Kirk. Always impulsive. At war. Always they war war among each other. Wow! Listen to you, Roddenberry. Actually, I wonder if that's the reason. Those are the two American souls at war with one another, and that's why uh, that those are the two characters in Star Trek. Huh. And the Enterprise is the United States. Interesting. So you're saying, yeah, no, that makes sense. I think we'll work on this. Mm -hmm. You know about my Fonzie principle. I do know about your Fonzie principle. Uh, for listeners who don't friend me on Facebook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Fonzie principle is the theory that in any given election, the candidate who will win is the one who is most approaching Fonzie. Yeah. Last night, Hillary Clinton approached Fonzie a lot quicker Hillary than... Clinton uh, was Fonzie. What's his name? Americans love the Fonzie because he's, uh, because he's stoic... Mm -hmm. And cool mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. He's stoic and and and, and desirable. Yes. Um so maybe that's yeah, there's 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 something there. I think your Star Trek theory is gonna be is gonna be ruffling a lot of feathers <laughs> in these upcoming next few weeks. I think Politico is gonna wanna have a conversation <laughs> with you. They wanna do an exclusive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um yeah, no, I'd love to talk more about I, it it's I feel like we have gone on a journey with Hillary Clinton in this uh in mm -hmm. this election. And it's been very interesting to me to see certain threads like I didn't you know, I I, I when she was running against Barack Obama, I was like, fuck her, that corporate Right, stooge. Like, and and during the whole Bernie stuff, I was sort of like, well, f forget that. I'm not yeah. into the centrist thing. But right now, the stakes are very high. For Christ's sake, the stakes are very high, and I also feel like I've 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 sort of started to see, you know, in in recent years, I've started to see maybe it's the result of having a daughter, or just being more cognizant of things, but starting to have a firmer firmer understanding of the expectations that we place upon women in this society. Oh, brutal. And they are, uh, they are brutal. And she's definitely a pioneer. Yeah. She's not getting enough credit for that. She's a pioneer. Like no, it does His, not, history will be very kind. Whatever, history will be very kind. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to a uh, fun segment. Oh, yes. Now that we've bored you all with political talk, mm -hmm. maybe we should put uh, newspapers at the end from now on. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Uh, okay, uh, you want to do, you've got a one toe, right? Oh, barely, but we can do one. You put your one toe in, then leave it in. You're done. I had a little birthday party. Mm. Very small. Why did you not invite me? It was, it was that small. Mm. You're too tall. Ah. Oh, you had <laughs> oh you had your your Smurf village. Yeah, your Smurf exactly. fantasy exactly. Birthday party. But it was very fun. We had a very good time. We had never had a, like a little party okay. uh, at our place before. It was, it was, we didn't even barely call it a party. But Emily really put on the dog. Like she really, she, like, she cooked and planned for weeks. I'll be and, honest, like, ladies and gentlemen, I was there. You were. Uh, but yeah, she fucking tore it up. But are there any listeners who now you might need to erase this segment because they weren't invited and yep. they're going to feel bad about themselves? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just talk you and me then, guy to guy. Okay. The way we do off air. Yeah. I think let's not do one tell. <laughs> Do you want to skip it? Yeah, let's skip. I was worried when you, yeah, I was worried as soon as you started thinking, I was like, are there people that... I thought about this also before. I mean, there are plenty of people I didn't invite and yeah. who would totally get the wrong idea. Yeah. And I felt bad about, I felt super bad about that. And there came a point where I came up with the first list and I was like, and then I started adding people and I'm, and every time I added a person who was like super important, Emily would be like, nope, nope, nope. Okay, well, let's say this. This is, this is an important point about this birthday party is that a house party becomes a negotiation between you and your spouse when you're married. Yes, that's true. Uh, you, you know, like she's, it's not just for you. Yeah. And it she is, was doing all the cooking. And that fucking food was out of this world. Those oysters, I, Brendan, I, I get it now. I get it. Really? I never got it before. You get it, Those right? oysters at your birthday party were fucking out of this world. Yeah. I always am like, yeah, oysters, like, you've got to put a lot of shit on them to, like, taste good. But those were just, 
Like I put a tiny bit of Tabasco, a little lemon, and mm-hmm. it was great, and they were delicious. Ugh. Like I got it. Yeah, life is white noise, oyster, white noise, oyster. Those were awesome, man. They were really um, good. I, I thank sent, you for sent, opening my eyes. Sent from Seattle. Uh, is that where they were from? I mm-hmm. thought they were Wellfleet. No? Those are not Wolf Legion oysters. They were somewhere... Well, they were sent by our friend, our dear friends in Seattle. I see. It was scary shucking that thing, man. Yeah, you almost stab your hand off all the time. Every, yeah, I was like, how can I not... How am I not going to kill myself? I know. Yeah, because you have to put enough pressure to get fucking in there. Yeah. But then you have to st- like put on the brakes right before you literally <sighs> decapitate oh, yourself. Oh, the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. Um, is there... I can't believe no one has invented a device for this. Besides a, a, a sword that you put through your hand? Yeah. Better yeah. than a little scimitar. <laughs> um, are we going to uh, cut this, or do you want to? Do we want to bra- blaze on? With, Maybe we ah, with sh- all your all a hundred percent apologies to anyone who wasn't invited to this party. Who, in all actuality, had far better things to do with their night, right? Than go to your fucking little soy soyery la di da. <laughs> talk about talk about real estate party. You know what we did though? What? We hired. Uh, a young woman to help us that night. Yeah, what was who? who where did they, where did she come from? From our babysitting service. That we were like, we need amazing. help with the party, and amazing. it was great. I mean, it was you have kind a of great. Babysitting service. Yeah. What? It's like a temp agency. Really? Yeah. What? It's awesome. So when we need a babysitter, Let's we call that. Offline. I mean, we have a thing about you know we have like a bench of babysitters and they like come in or whatever. So it's usually the same people. Wow. But they fill vacancies. Like we can like get an extra you know whatever. It's pretty great. Anyway. They also do parties or whatever. So I was like, so we need help with uh, parties, yeah. uh, with this party. Because I said to Emily, Emily was all against that. And I was like, oh, hell no. Because otherwise we'll just be doing fucking chores all night. And then the people who don't know each other out there are just going to be talking to each other. How and much? then I'll be feel tortured. How much per hour? 20 bucks an hour. 20 bucks an hour for an, a personal assistant. Yeah, who did all the dishes. Who the fuck? What? That's and she brilliant. just like kept like clearing people's plates and just like cleaning. You know what that's I mean? That's like, so worth it for like it was, four hours? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that's Brennan. You've you've tapped into it, yeah. It except a except minefield of riches. She did. She was a classic millennial. Is the only problem. Oh, really? Yeah. She kind of talked Emily's ear off about herself, and like, and Emily was like stressing and trying to like focus, right? And then Emily would leave the room and come back and be like, and look at the kitchen and be like, okay, what do I have to do next? And this young woman would be like, anyway. So then my boyfriend said, uh, like, pick up right where she left off, and wow. it was like, oh my god. You kind of admire that to a certain up, extent. Shut up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess so. I mean, like, I, I'm not saying that that servant should have known her place, certainly. Right. Sure, <laughs> but I am saying that young person should have known that she's not the most interesting fucking person in the world right now. <laughs> Probably not your party. Not yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah. God bless her. Yeah. You know, but well, uh, I thought it was a lovely party, and I had some really good conversations. I got to talk to Brian Kahn. Oh yeah, uh, and which was fantastic. I've been wanting to have a conversation with that gentleman for quite some time now Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was so nice to just like shoot the shit yeah he's a good guy a lot of nice people sitting around just standing around uh getting to know each other yeah yeah uh so that was that was great was there anything that you in particular did you uh, did you get smashed that night what 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 was your yeah i did really you're up late yeah i was how did people stay aren't these all adults i know right but people stayed and felled and shut up late of course oh See, he was on the invite list. Yeah, he was. I wanted to see that kid. Yeah, I know he's a good kid. Okay, Dowling was too, but he had a concert or something. Oh huh, well, who who wouldn't be? In, who's not? That those were the two people I was concerned about. Oh no, no, concern yourself not with those oh, okay. jokers. But I wish I had been able to see them. Yeah, and I also. What are you gonna do? What are um, you gonna do? Okay, was that was that an overly personal segment? Should we? <laughs> there's a there's um there's a blemish on my penis, and it's been there a, long, a while now. It's the Mexican donut, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we do uh, Kids Are More Important? We can do Kids Are More Important. Okay. Uh, maybe we should have donuts while we do it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll try to do that. Why don't you... I have a lot of talking to do. Okay. So, why so don't I will have my donut. donut while you're yeah. doing that. Yeah. Let's okay, here comes Kids Are More Important. Our hopes and our dreams are losing their steam. They're futile anyhow. Don't you know the kids are more important now? Uh, okay, so I've been talking to you about my uh, my our dilemmas over Hazel School. Oh, yes. So last week what we did, just looking into our other options, four blocks away from here, there is a Waldorf school. Oh, no shit. 
Wait a second, you're thinking about other options already. We are thinking about other options mm-hmm. just for this year, mm-hmm. you know, potentially. Um, do you know anything about the Waldorf stool, school, Brendan? Yeah, don't learn to read until you have all your teeth. Yeah, that's that's a thing. That's that's definitely a thing. So also, this is, Sufjan Stevens was a Waldorf kid. Oh, how about this? Um, I definitely could sense that. Um, he that that he's, seems like the he's place is so courageous creatively. Made. Yeah. Um, so started by this guy Rudolf Steiner. I don't know much about it, but there's this whole tri there's this whole triangle in Altadena, which I'm going to do some research on this and tell tell you about it. There's Rudolf Steiner. There was uh, the guy who started JPL mm-hmm. and someone else. I forget who the third one was, but there were like three disciplines and they all had these super crazy, far out futuristic hippie ideas about the world. And one was approaching it from science, the JPL guy. One was approaching it from like education, Steiner. And the third was maybe a psychologist. I forget who the third one was. But apparently this was all happening in Altadena in the... 40s maybe really yeah these weird crazy outcasts um and they have actually at the uh, museum of jurassic technology right now uh-huh. they have a display of letters that were written to the um the guy who started jpl about from average americans who like knew who he was and sent him le- letters about their scientific theories and it's fascinating, Brendan. You would oh be obsessed with this thing. God. You need to go and just like read every letter of these, these yeah, these or every letter of these letters. But anyway, so um, Rudolf Steiner started this 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 school, which the called the Waldorf School, which it's this very specific, insanely hippie. I mean, for nine for for the nineteen forties, I don't even know what this is. For <laughs> now, in Los Angeles, it is far out mm-hmm. where. The kids eat each other, right? In a ceremony, like one of the weakest one gets eaten at the end of the year. Yeah, but gently, lightly they, killed. They, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, it's just they they are super like they they emphasize a lot of skills that we don't emph- that normal schools don't emphasize anymore. Like they start out. We went. We're touring the school. Uh, we go to the kindergarten. There's a kindergartner sitting near the the front door on a stool, and everything in this entire school, Brendan, is handmade. There is no plastic anywhere to be found. It is all wooden benches, wooden desks, uh, crocheted dolls that the kids play with. Mm-hmm. Like there's, it is, it is Little House on the Prairie, wow. and there's this girl kindergartner sitting in front of the kindergarten class with a washboard and a wash basin and she's washing she's doing laundry <laughs> for the class they they have these scarves and that's one of the two items that they are given to play with as kindergartners and the scarves teach them the fundamentals of math like they start to see like when you fold it in half, then this is what happens. You fold it in force and this is what happens. And they don't, they're not expected to read until third grade because in the Waldorf method, you're like every year you're like learning about, you're learning about, they, they told us, and I, I have to do more research on this, but their explanation to us is that by the end of first grade, you understand why the letters have their shapes brilliant (laughs) and that's like where you're building your fundamentals of reading like so you're so far behind every other kid in public school or whatever but by the time these kids graduate they're fucking swift john stevens Mm -hmm. they're creative intelligent genius like oh my god this is where oscar needs to go to school i think you would be super into it i think you would be super into it but like i mean some of the stuff so like all the teachers are in peasant dresses. I don't know if that's like a a, uni- a cult uniform or if that's just how they choose to dress. Uh-huh. But like everyone looks like they're at the Renaissance fair, basically. <laughs> um, and it's a magical, like totally beautiful, like environment, you know, like tucked away in the woods. And like it, it looks like the Renaissance 
uh, festival. Like wow. that's, that's what the kids are running around in all day. Um, and the, we were told so many things completely straight faced where I was like, is there any, it could it, like, what's your perspective here? <laughs> like this person who has given us a tour, every classroom is painted, uh, for, for the different grades, the classrooms are painted, uh, according to the frequency of color that is most resonant for children of that particular age. <laughs> So like all of the kindergarten classrooms are orange. All of the first grade classrooms are red or pink or whatever, because like somehow at that age, you're, the vibrations given off by the colors are more appropriate, which I have no fucking idea where this research comes from. <laughs> but just like all of this shit, like there's that. And then some, and then we went into a teacher's classroom and she was telling us about like last week, a, a child baked us a, a uh, dairy free, gluten free, nut free, blah blah blah. She brought in these cupcakes, and they were delicious. And I was just like, "Was were you being like, were you winking when you said that, or <laughs> like, what's happening here?" It felt like such a foreign world to me. And Brendan, I I grew up a cynic. Uh-huh. I think I have lost a lot of my cynicism after having moved to Los Angeles. Huh. Like I. And being married to Sarah, like I feel like Sarah is definitely more hippie than me. And I think there was a certain point where I was just like, you know what? Fucking these people seem happy. Like, <laughs> yeah. why, why must I scoff at their happiness? Like I'm interested in hearing where everyone was coming from. But there was definitely something about this school where I felt as if if they had only said, I know this might sound weird to you, but trust me, there is a method here, mm-hmm. but they didn't say that, which made me believe that in where they were coming from, there was nothing weird about any of this stuff, Yeah, <laughs> which makes me rethink my entire like way of being, you know? Oh yeah. I'm like, what is weird and what isn't weird? Like this seems very abnormal to me. Like I, I'm, I can trust that there's, that there's something behind it, because, especially having met kids that have graduated from Waldorf schools and knowing how fucking cool they are, you know? Yeah. But like they don't allow any electronics. Like kids can't watch TV. They don't have any computer lab or anything like that. Kids are encouraged not to watch TV at home. Um, yeah, it just seems like a very like weirdly idyllic remove. For, it's almost like Quaker, or like Amish. Like you're sending your kid to Amish school. Yeah. You know? Wow. Um, so I don't know, but uh, you know, I'm like for a year might be interesting. It's certainly a incredibly gentle environment for a kindergartner. Like Hazel would enjoy herself. Yeah. Oscar would enjoy himself. Yeah. And Oscar, yeah. And Oscar has his uh, crazy way of, of expressing himself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it sounds like in a, in that kind of environment, he would not be subjected to douchebaggery. No, 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 no. It, they're very into emotional development. Huh. Um, I, I'm sold. But they also told us one of the things they said, uh, yeah, we don't, you know, we're not, we're not really into reading that much in kindergarten. So by the end of the kin- the school year, don't expect them to know their letters, but we think it's very important that they know how to jump rope <laughs> by the end of kindergarten. <laughs> so they spend a lot of time jumping rope. So I'm like, mm, yeah, all right. Uh, well, all right. I guess that's pretty important yeah but the philosophy which is fascinating is that um let me just say this and then we'll go into our other segments is that you build body first you start like inward you have to have your confidence in your body before you can do anything else Uh uh-huh and you have to be able to like use your body before you can use your brain wow it is very interesting that is very interesting and probably true yeah i never learned that I don't, I don't know how to use my body. I don't know what my fucking body is doing. <laughs> You're an amazing dancer, Jeffrey. Oh, thank you. We all know it. But it's because I, I just flail. You, what you I do flail a bit. is you unlock the secrets of the body. Speaking of, let's take a moment to um, plug Vorhorst. Oh, yes. We have our first single out. Uh, this, uh, they have their first single the, out. They, they have our, their first single out. Yes. There's a, there's a, a fantastic... Uh, Pop band from somewhere in the Slavic, Austrian, Bra- Bra- Germanic, yeah, the outer Bratislava somewhere area around there, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the principles of dancing, the principles of dancing. If you go to the uh, Dad Jeans feed, you can find it. Yep, 
Um, it, it's pretty great. <laughs> should we move on? What's your next segment? Because I feel like uh, we should do one more and then we'll get into our Spike Club and Violet advice. Oh, yeah, 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 certainly. Okay. Um, not going to do that one. Uh, no, let's go, let's go right into it. I do have, uh, I could do like a, a leisure class. My, my favorite synth pop band out of St. Louis Ooh. has a new album. Oh, middle class fashion has a new album three. Okay. It's fucking great. Is this a band you've recommended to me on the, uh, here on the podcast? Let, yeah, me, yeah. Um, let me write that down. Middle class fashion, middle class fashion came out with their third album. I don't know why I love them so much, but this, this woman's voice She's in a brilliant songwriter. Okay. And they're just like, you know, they I think that like what last time we talked about, they had like six hundred Twitter followers. They're just like struggling along. I think they probably all have day jobs. They're in St. Louis. Uh-huh. Uh, but she's a fucking genius. Interesting. And her lyrics are absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's it's pop, but it has like this sick depth and portrays this imagery of uh the collisions of youth, the beer addled collisions, uh, like uh that sounds lovely. Like I was, I was thinking about one of her lyrics on the way up, and it's it's something like, um, "Wow, you're really smitten. You know lyrics." Yeah, yeah, and I never it's listen to level. lyrics. Yeah, uh, there's no uh, there's no master plan. When I see you, I'm dead. There's oh. no master plan. When I see you, I'm dead. That's good. It's great. It's, it's hard hitting. Yeah. Um. That uh. Is there anything twee about them? Would I enjoy them? Uh, mm, I don't know. The more driving and synthy. Okay. They're sort of like Chiverches a little bit, but less like, like metric, airy maybe? fairy. Do you know metric? No, I don't. Okay. But if like Chiverches were more, um, uh, had more, a little more heft mm-hmm. and a little more demand in the voice and a little less like Tinkerbell flitting around. Okay. It's pretty great. Awesome. I'll yeah. check them out. There it is. So I didn't even bother with the theme song, but that's a leisure class. Let's go into Spike Club. Okay, let's do it. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Spike Club. I hate I hate you! I hate you! Spy Club! Fuck! My Spy Club is a very simple Spy Club. I hope there are other parents who can relate to this. Uh, bubbles. Bubbles. I fucking hate bubbles. Wait, this is sounding familiar. Have you hated bubbles in the past? I, I think I, at your birthday party, I was telling you that this yes, was going true. to be my next bike. Oh, club. that's what it is. There's a danger of you and I ever seeing each other not with hot mics. I know. It is true. It is true because I, I remember very specifically everything said on dad jeans, but I don't remember anything we say outside of <laughs> outside of school. <laughs> um, but uh, no, fucking bubbles, man. I, just bubble solution is so gross and sticky and gets all over your hands and gets everything messy and gets your kids messy mm-hmm. and then they get in and it's ironic because it's soap yeah it is ironic but it's like soap when misused is quite a filthy item <laughs> <laughs> that's very deep gets all over their clothes um and uh like the fucking the work of blowing bubbles is up to you as the parent yeah until oh, yeah i can tell you like hazel's five and a half it's still up to me uh-huh like i don't know when that goes she away. just b- blasts through it and then you have to dip it again and blow slowly right sure. like you have to do it yourself yeah exactly i guess maybe if she went to waldorf school she'd probably be a genius to try to blow bubbles. bubbles yeah ping yeah. pong bubbles and she'd, jump rope she'd be in fucking bubble class <laughs> you know? oh it's like acting at the yale school of drama yeah exactly <laughs> yawn and bubble <laughs> But um, I th- that's 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 it. It's just one of those things that like you have to contend with as a parent. Like it's a thing yep. that kids always want to do and are always interested in. Yeah, and it always sucks as a yeah, parent. Like paints, paints, paints. Yeah, I, I love the idea of my children painting. Oh sure, yeah. But do you have six maids? Yeah, exactly. All of the f- everything surrounding the art, the act of painting. Yeah, is a pain in the fucking ass. And uh, Oscar just dumps all of the paint onto one sheet of paper so then it's this this like oh this giant deep mass. dish pizza of paint right and then you've got the the painting that is the most hideous thing you've ever seen in your fucking life and you got to do something with it yeah what are you going to do are you going to hang it up you're going to put that glob of paint <laughs> exactly. on your wall the paint's so thick you stick it up with a thumbtack and it like rips right through and falls to the ground <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah you could build something with that paint exactly sheet of paint maybe um okay what's your spike club i hate inanity mm-hmm. i really can't take it anymore hmm. it really makes me fucking crazy what qualifies as inanity <sighs> well i was waiting for the subway today and uh i'm at seventh and metro 
That's a good band name, actually. Inanity. Inanity. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I'm at fucking Seventh and Metro, and like the tra- and it's super crowded, and it is always now because the Metro is like I don't know, have a train in half an hour, maybe if we think about it. Yeah, and uh, the, and the and it's also like a thing. Like people are like, ooh, let's let's ride the train, let's be wild. Yeah, yeah. I want to be black. I want to be. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, I'm standing there. So fucking. Uh, I'm standing there and then this like the train pulls up and it's super crowded and I was like oh no as the, as the crowded train pulls into the station and then the door oh. opens and then a bunch of people start getting out and okay. this and there's a couple next to me and yeah. they're like having their young lives or whatever mm-hmm. and maybe they're a new couple I don't know but the woman is, is like in the morning as you're going to work no it's coming home oh okay and the woman of the couple and by woman, I mean she's like twenty three or whatever. Huh. She, uh, she's having a good old day. She's having a, like yeah, psh, she she just doesn't care in the world. Yeah, um, and neither does he. And they're just like they're just they're just standing there, being you know, listening to young, being young, being, doing their young, yeah. carefree thing. Young assholes. Young assholes. Right. And uh, pause, 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 pause. Finally, she goes. It's a good thing everyone gets off at this stop. And he's like, oh, yeah. Well. That's what I mean, right? What if the uh, if if a valid answer right. to anything you say <laughs> could be, yeah, no shit, right? Then don't say it. Yeah, like mm. put a spin on it. Have right. a fucking personality, right? Don't just say don't like a thing like yeah. huh, noun, right? Uh, uh, obvious thing, Oof. like fuck you and your obvious thing. Don't waste. Yeah. I have words, a limited number words of words for wor- the sake of words. Words for the sake of and just like. That, that that like saying something coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Like everything coming to me. I hear you. It needs to have, it has a value, an intrinsic yeah. value, but the more you use it, the less it has. Right. And so these, this like, bap, 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 stupid, bap, 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 right. bap, bap, like tell a story with it, be Hegelian, beginning, middle, and end, or portray, like tell us about the human condition, to make their, have there be characters. Right. You know what's along those lines? Is when I'm driving with someone and they're like, like just reading things that they see on the way, like, huh, Tarzan. Duh. Like just looking at him oh, or whatever. Oh, fucking no, like, no, huh, no, right aid. No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> just like, no, <laughs> please, God. Or I see the thing too. Yeah, or even like, oh, they have right aids out here. But I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen any Dwayne Reeds. Yeah, because, <laughs> right. yeah, no shit. Because they're in New York. <laughs> right. Huh. Yeah. yeah. But there are, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is CVS. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So far, pharmacies. Is that people, it's because people are uncomfortable with silence, right? Is that what I it is? I, or just they're uncomfortable not being the center of attention. I don't know. But like, I, it's it, overhearing other people saying any things makes me more angry than, I'm sure I'm guilty of it myself. Right. But like, overhearing other people exchange inanities yeah. makes me want to just end the world like hit the button nuke from orbit all of it because like that's you know i I feel like i know couples that that's the only thing they do is exchange inanities oh i know and (laughs) and, yeah this puts a lot of pressure on my marriage Mm -hmm. because i don't like exchanging inanities ever Mm -hmm. and so but like when you spend that much time with another person poor emily she likes the chatterbox now and then you know what i mean right and she's good at it and like does provide spin etc right but i'm like "Uh, uh uh-huh Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're that guy? You're uh-huh. that dad? And then eventually I'm like, can we stop talking for a little while? Wow. But I don't, I, but I am too, but I put myself under too that? much pressure. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, let's, let's, like on long drives, I'll be like, yeah, let's, uh, let's just meditate for a little while. What do you say? Let's just stare out the window. Oh, that's good that you can say that though. It, it was, it was a, a lot got me to that point. She had to coach me into being able to say that because I was like flipping my shit. Right. Because I could not I sustain. I don't want to talk anymore. Yeah. But you weren't able to say that. Right, right. But is it so much nicer now that you can say that? Oh, yeah, it's great. Oh, well, look at that. I just got to draw a boundary. She's a, she, if there were an Olympics uh, event for drawing boundaries, Emily yeah. Topper would be the champion of the world. She's yeah, amazing. but God, God bless her for uh, accepting them from others. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's she fair can, game. She can draw boundaries, you know. But if she if she's like, yeah, I want to be able to infringe upon your boundaries whenever the fuck I want to, then and that's, and that's, that's unhealthy. Yeah. But and if as she a can, non-draw boundary drawer, that's how I used to always interpret it, and so mm-hmm. I'd be so affronted. Mm-hmm. But but I have found over the years, if I'm like back off to her like yeah. that, literally that pointed, yeah, 
it's like she almost gets aroused. She's like, ooh, where's, yeah. this, where's this Brendan been? I certainly will back off. Let me tell you something about women, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> They uh we're the we're this fucking generation of emasculated men, but when we show a little fucking spike, like it's <laughs> it's hot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and Emily's like, bring it. She yeah, she's very encouraging yep. of me to be like a man about things. That's beautiful. But I don't I don't accept her invitation usually. No, nah, but you you will. You'll grow together. We'll grow together. You're gonna you're gonna keep we'll on this train. Conjoined. Yeah. This yeah. in, inane train that <laughs> to take the inane inane train yeah inane train. It's she, like a, Aussie, uh, a really bad Aussie song. <laughs> <laughs> she um she has taught me a lot. Oh well, good. That's a, she's a, she's a, she's quite an amazing human being. I'll accept that. There I said it. Ah wow, listen to that. I hope uh, Emily makes it this far in the podcast. She's never listened to a single episode. Huh. It's fine. Whatever. She doesn't need to. Yeah. Um, but uh, fatherly advice. Fatherly advice. Help me, daddy. Fatherly advice. Help me, Daddy. Fatherly advice. You know, I actually don't have anything this week. I do. Maybe, maybe you want to go for one, and I'll see if I can come up with anything. Okay. Okay. If the trash collection in your neighborhood is, let's say, Tuesday. Yeah. Have fish dinner Monday night. Oh, right. That's smart. Yeah. Have fish dinner close to when your trash will be collected. You know what, Brendan, can I tell you that this advice does not do anything for me as a parent because our trash is constantly filled with dirty diapers. Oh, yeah, nasty. ours too. It's fucking it's so rancid. You've ever seen uh, in your uh, entire life. Even just thinking about it is no, so it's, gross. It's awful. It's, it's so it's, awful. It's, it's hideous. And then you get the the bug problem too cuz you know what yeah. they you know what loves that poop is them flies. Flies buzzing around. I don't even want to look in there. I don't I don't want to know what's crawling around in my child's feces. We had a <laughs> Jesus Christ! We had a uh, we had a, a babysitter like there was a, a poop explosion at some point, so mm. the, the diaper was just like the babysitter had to basically like enough of those bring the diaper and just like throw it into the black bin, just right. like not in a bag, not anything. So it just like just exploded into the bottom, Ugh. and it took me a couple of weeks to deal with it because like I would Ugh. take it out to the trash, but it just got I'm, worse and worse I, and worse. I am hurting, and, and then finally I had to like clean that fucking thing uh, you, you should never have to clean no i over the weekend i cleaned it you like crawled inside no that no cavernous no. i just used the hose and some bleach but it's still awful. oh god god bless you yeah um but that's what we have to do as dads yeah no it's true you think someone else is gonna do that no no one else is gonna do that um but what's your so do you do you have anything more to say about your fish dinner i mean i i i heard that i took that immediately i took your meaning i understand yeah. where you're coming from on that mm-hmm. well i was thinking like uh you, you don't know, want the nasty shit like yeah yeah you gotta strategize let's say your family that has uh, one fish dinner a week Los angeles yeah okay go ahead make that fish dinner the night before the trash is collected here's what else uh there are great uh fish taco deals all around the city where you can get them for you know a dollar dollar fifty mm-hmm. on different days of the week depending on when the fish the, the taco place gets their fish delivery which is usually the next day or you go to best fish taco in ensenada where it's off a dollar oh yeah it's always a dollar why i ask you because is it you know it's all gonna be like nasty trash Maybe. tilapia tastes good i mean i'm sure it's fine i've had it it's fine yeah. they have comedy shows there by the way oh really yeah they do these things at places in L.A. I know, and everyone goes to the thing with the stupid whatever. I used to date a stand-up comic. I went to see her perform at a yoga studio once. Oh, so depressing. And there was literally, no, I was literally the only audience member besides the other comics. Oh, excellent. It was so bad. Oh, and they try out their new material, and they like they have their notebooks out, and they record themselves with their iPhone, and they get up, and they're like... And they don't even, their jokes aren't even jokes yet. They're not even no. thoughts yet. No, yeah, they're barely thoughts. They're like, HBO, what does that even stand for? <laughs> right, right. Okay, and then they cross it out. Right, yeah, exactly. And you're like, what? That yeah. was it. A- that was a thing? Or else you get the the other, the flip side of that is the, like I've seen the guy who's trying really hard, but is like, seems violently insane. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he's like just saying these things that like trying to be provocative but they're really like the most disturbing things you've ever heard in your life like yeah i i used to get beat up by my dad yeah I, he'd whoop me in the ass he'd take me he'd fuck me in the ass <laughs> you know and you're just like what are you fucking like you're like this is uh, like not even a joke just like but like said in that jokey delivery and this is like 
another thing I was thinking about during the debate is that like so much of the sub like there was no substance in anything Donald Trump said. Like it, it was a void of substance. Like it, you know there was there was it was it was anti substance. Yeah. <laughs> like if you actually dived in, if you have read anything online today, like any of the transcripts quotes yeah the transcripts that of what he actually says it's glorious like it's it's such gibberish and like somehow (laughs) it coalesces when you're hearing it Mm -hmm. but like on the printed page it is indecipherable (laughs) but like i feel like there's a lot of stand-up comics who they just adopt the tone of comedy yeah but what they're actually doing isn't jokes you know yes right yeah so i'm walking around the other day and i thought I got to take a piss. So I'm looking around. There's nowhere to take a piss. So what do I do? You know, I go, you know, like that, like that was so uncanny. Thank you. (laughs) That was actually really amazing. But that, but like there, there are entire like successful comedians who I feel like have built their entire career on that. Yeah. But there's not really a joke anywhere. Yeah. It's just, it's just delivery right? or references. Like, yeah. Remember this ad that we all, watched as a kid and everyone's like oh i remember yeah. that oh god or, or just straight up racism too that's yeah. always there i yeah or you or you see the one who's like oh my god that guy could be like my best friend mm-hmm. i've never felt more connected to another human being in the way they think and everything and then you like are there around afterwards and you're like hey i thought your set was great and they like then are super weird oh, and they the aren't at all you've ever seen in your life yeah they're yeah. not normal they're not uh, they're not who they were on stage. Yeah, they're like shakily lighting a cigarette, and they're like, "Yeah, thanks, man. I don't know. It was just kind of crap." Oh. And yeah. then they like split, and you're like, "What? Well, yeah. Who was that guy on stage? That guy on stage was going to be my new friend." No, they're and strange people. Strange yeah, people very weird. Stand-up comics. Then you got your normal ones. <laughs> <laughs> Distant dog barks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. You know what? I who do I? I guess I know a few. Normal. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, we've got a I special left the guest. Seat up. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Okay. Thank. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, because I went to the bathroom after you, so uh-huh. I, I put the seat down. Um, we have a special guest joining us right now. Uh, my wife Sarah Cole. She has a Spike Club. Come join us. Great to see you. <laughs> sorry, Mr. Dinner. I heard it was great. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so my first Spike Club, I'm very excited to be here, is it's the time when you go into a restaurant and it's an empty restaurant and you say, two please, and the hostess looks at you and says, do you have a reservation? (laughs) And you just want to pummel them. <laughs> yes. This, this should not be allowed to be asked in an empty restaurant on a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Yes. So that yes. is it. A Mic drop. Men. That's good. That's great. <laughs> High five. That wow. is fantastic. That, was, that felt like an epic moment in Dad Jean's history. That really was. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. It's so it's so true. Yeah. Though it's like, what is the is the point just to intimidate you, or is it that they just are so used to just doing their job? Like that is the question. It's like you might as well be calling a like helpline, or uh, you know, for for your Mac, or you know, oh yeah, or, exactly. Uh, you, know, you might as well be, well be calling AT and T, and they're just like repeating the script from yeah reboot. India. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and then they go get a job at a Samaritan helpline. Uh, Nicholas you... Weiner could probably give us some insight into this. Oh, I bet he could. Yeah, yeah. If you want to call us, Nicholas three two three four eight four four three eight three. Um, and that goes for the rest of you as well. I got no my my wife just I think blew all of us out of the water. Yeah, blew the doors off. So I got nothing more to add. I nice. got no advice this week. Go go out, get laid, get your Mexican donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, because the time to live is now. Past you doesn't exist. Yes, it doesn't. Future you is, uh, is ready to receive your gifts. Ready for you is waiting. Is waiting for you to put the forks in the right compartment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's that's it. And my donuts were delicious. Yes, thank you so much to the donut dudes, Brian Please and Alan. Them. Thank you. Please go watch the donut dudes yes. on YouTube. And in the com- comment section, say dad jeans or something to that effect yep 
or promote us, link to us. Oh, if you want to go the extra mile, yeah, there you maybe go. we'll send you something too. I love the donut dudes are like, yeah, we'll send you something. We've never promised anything to anyone. No, just that's, more of this bullshit. That's why no one listens. We're like, yeah, we're going to have another two hours of fucking nonsense for you next week. <laughs> I don't know. Well, thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Thank you very, very much. Uh, yep. Yeah. Until the future. Nope. Yep. Future. Yep. Good night. Yep. Goodbye. Damn.